We are going to talk now about the tennis legend Martina Navratilova. And we're going to talk. defended her comments that it is unfair for transgender athletes to compete in women's sport. I know I'm not supposed to say anything about this, but her voice. I can listen to someone's voice that sounds like this, report news all freaking day. She has a beautiful voice. I know it isn't fair. I almost want to play it over and listen to it again. And I'm not trying to be sexist or anything like that. I mean, this is a professional. She just has a lovely voice. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's the voice that sells it. So, you know what I mean? I, in my district, no, I mean... Well, Navratilova has been forced to apologise using the word cheat, but said she wants to make sure that women can compete on a level playing field. So she Especially sitting next to this guy's voice. This guy's voice compared to her voice, come on now. Come on now. Should transgender women be able to compete against female athletes, or does it give them an unfair advantage? The answer is no. Well, joining us now is sociologist Ellis Cashmore, who says sport needs to adapt to accept transgender athletes. India Willoughby, alongside him, is Britain's first transgender TV newsreader and doesn't think any trans person, person should compete at an elite level. And from Wiltshire, former Olympic swimmer Sharon Davis, who thinks trans athletes shouldn't compete in female sporting events. So, good morning to all of you. India Willoughby, I want to start with you. You do not think that individuals who are born into a man's body but transition to become women should then be able to compete against women who were born into women's bodies. I mean, I... I, I don't even think she can say that twice. I doubt she can say that twice. What she just now said sounds like a riddle. You can't say that twice. I feel, have to say, mm. I feel nervous even talking about it because I'm always afraid that I'm going to get the language wrong. Well, I'm not afraid it's... to discuss this because I think it's absolutely vital we discuss it. No, absolutely. And if people want to blow up about the odd word here on there, Go ahead, bro. they are doing what they normally do, which is bullying people into being silent about a very sensible debate. But I you think. know what and I mean. That's I right. know exactly what you mean. That's and I right. Think the root of all that is that LGB at the moment is more like the KGB in Ooh. that no alternative <laughs> opinion <laughs> is allowed. Like now, the, KGB. the facts actually speak for themselves when you look at the record books as well. You know, I think I looked up last night, there are 2,000 men in the world at the moment that can run 100 metres faster than the greatest sprint, female sprinter of all time. Mm. 2,000 men. 1,500 of the top male tennis players could beat Serena Williams. Yeah. So if even one of them decides to, to become identified, all you have to do, you don't have to fully transition or go through any surgery or anything like that, you just have to say, I identify as a woman. You need you to have, be on hormones. You have hormonal doctors. treatment to reduce your testosterone levels to the required level, mm. but you physically remain the same, and then you can compete in the women's yeah. sport. So, me, I am a lightweight. If I was to box, I would box a woman who can box 160, right? My shoulders will still be the same. Um, my arm length will still be the same, very long arm length. Um, the size of my fist and the power of my um, coming from my back and my chest will still be the same. And I will be able to fight a woman if I was to just say I identify as a woman now and i'm taking hormones come on bro i'm i don't agree with that at all but then again i'm no scientist i'm just now learning about it so anything that y'all can teach me about this that would be amazing also if you like this type of content do me a favor and hit the subscribe button also the notification bell so that next time we do post some content you'll be the first to be notified thank you and it's not just about strength as well i mean i Obviously, I'm not on testosterone anymore. I actually have less testosterone than a natural-born woman in my body. Mm. Um, it's more to do with the fact that if you've gone through male puberty, the chances are, not exclusively, but mm. the chances are, you're going to be taller, broader, mm. your stride is going to be greater, your reach, all of these factors come into play at the elite level where margins are really Well, fine. let's bring in Sh Sharon Davis. Sharon, you've competed at the elite level of women's sport. It seems to me it's incredibly troublesome, the journey that this is all going on. I completely salute Martina Navratilova for putting her head above the parapet. She's been instantly shot down. She's been fired from charitable organisations in America because of this, being accused of being transphobic, despite being one of the biggest supporters of transgender people imaginable, frankly. But tell me this, from a pure sporting perspective, from your point of view, what is the issue? 
Uh, the issue is if obviously you've gone through puberty. I mean, India said it all, really. And if you go through puberty, you have all the benefits of having a male body. And even if you transition and reduce your testosterone, you're still going to have those benefits. You're going to have the, the bone structure, the slightly bigger heart, more red blood cells, um, you know, the, the, the smaller pelvis sitting on a cycle. That makes quite a big difference. So therefore, a female athlete competing against a transgender a female is always going to be at a disadvantage. Now, I, as you said, competed in the 80s when I was uh, with, with the East German system. It was a, a different process, but the same aim result. You stood on the block knowing that you just could not beat this person next to you, no matter how hard you trained. And that's why I've come out and said what I've said, to support Martina, as <coughs> has Paula, you know, as has Nicola Adams. Many people are actually saying, look, come on, you know, we are not transphobic whatsoever. We, we understand that transphobic uh, men and women have gone through a really tough process, and we very much support them. But actually, we also need to support female athletes as well. I think it's crazy how we all got to walk on eggshells just to, just to give our opinions. Why do we have to walk on eggshells just to get our, give our opinions and seemingly come off as transphobic or get accused of it? I don't want to say anything that might come off as, I don't want to say anything that might be a, a trigger and make people pounce on me and start calling me transphobic and all these things. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to walk on eggshells. Hopefully I don't say the wrong thing. That's crazy, man. It makes it very, it makes it very difficult to trust people like that because we're now everything that we say is extremely calculated. No one's being pure at heart It's extremely calculated because we only say what we want to say, or we feel like we can't get canceled for saying behind closed doors. So almost everything that you say to someone is now disingenuous. We can't walk around on eggshells. We got to be able to say what we want to say and, um, and, and not have a fear of if we say the wrong thing. I mean, what's the right thing and what's the wrong thing? If you're not saying something to, um, to um, intentionally hurt someone, intentionally respect, I mean, disrespect someone, then what's the point? Yeah, we're thinking about what we're going to say beforehand anyway. So everything's calculated. It's like it's, it's who we are are who we are. But when it comes to these types of topics, who we are are not who we are. Well, who we represent in the public, that's not who we are. All right, let me just go ahead along with this. Well, so, I mean, I suppose the obvious question then is, if, they, if we say, right, transgender women who were born to male biological bodies, they can't compete against women in sport, how should they compete? Because what you don't want to do is then discriminate against transgender women athletes. What is the fair solution, do you think? Because that seems to yeah, me absolutely. to be an obvious second question. They need a transgender league. Settled it. They need a transgender league. Settled it. Period. That's the only way to. That's the only way to do it. Have trans women um, go against trans women. Have trans men go against trans men. That settles it. I mean, every every other group gets a league. Think about it. And I don't even have to go into it, but think about it. Every single time a group is created, they get a league. A league, a league, a league. And when I say group is created, y'all know what I'm talking about. Right now, we're talking about a group that we weren't talking about a few years ago like this, but now we are. So that we're talking about them now, and the only way to fix it is if they have their own league, period. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the difficulty is you can't really hold uh, another category alongside of the Olympic Games because transgender women and men would be such a small category, it would be very difficult to hold a competitive race. But maybe what you could do is have a transgender Games, which could be put on across the whole world by the transgender community, the same as they have the transplant Games, which are really successful and very large. So there are lots of options. I'm not saying that anyone that's transgender should not be able to compete in sport, take part in all sorts Let of them different go activities. Let them against each other. Elite level, when we're talking about people's careers or... The men go against the men already, NBA. The women go against the women in, um, in um, WNBA. Um, I'm sure they have handicap leagues. They have all these other type of leagues. Come on now. They have leagues that maybe like leagues under that that don't quite make it there yet. This is everywhere. Everywhere. So they just need their own leagues. Period. That'll fix it. And don't do all that... Um, whining about being included and whatnot. Oh, y'all are discriminating. Y'all won't include us in y'all games. No, that's because we don't have to. We don't have to. Because right now it's not making sense. And honestly, it's for your protection. 
got community, you know, uh, okay. I don't know, college um, sponsorship and, and scholarships and all those sort of things. I think you would be actually removing those opportunities okay. from, from females, from younger women. Professor Ellis Cashmore, mm. um, you disagree with both Sharon Davis, who's competed at elite level, and India Willoughby, who is in exactly this position. But Why? I can understand the objections of both <coughs> of them, so I think it's completely understandable. But here's the reality. This is a 21st century, a century in which we are embracing gender fluidity. The prison service, educational institutions, uh, the military, you name it. All the major institutions of society are getting to grips with gender fluidity and they are going to have to accommodate mm. trans people in the future. Sport is not exempted. Well, how do you make it fair? Peers wants to segregate them. I no, no, I want to make you... No, oh, oh, point. Oh, oh, I want to segregate them. Pierce, say it, say it. You want to segregate them. It's for their own good. Great. No, Shall I, we no, 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 no. What Don't, do you want to do? Here's what I want to do. I want to, I want transgender people to be afforded absolute equality and fairness, right? That's One. what I'm arguing. One. There is nothing fair or equal about allowing transgender women who were born to male biological bodies to compete against women. That is not fair, fair and equal. equal. It's, not, it's unfair there and is, unequal. There is something of a myth of fairness in sport. Sport has never been fair. You bought into that myth, so have a lot of other people. But let's face it, if I wanted to be a jockey, I couldn't be. Nature endows her gifts unevenly in society. I couldn't... If he wanted to be a jockey, he couldn't be, because jockeys are um, usually extremely short, I believe. I believe they're extremely short, so he couldn't be no jockey. He couldn't be a, um, what you call it, a football player, NFL football player either because he's not built for that. But he could have. I mean, he could have been that. He could have been a jockey if he wanted to, if he really tried to go for it. I mean, come on now, look at Spud Webb. Who would have ever thought that Spud Webb would have been able to play for the NBA? Come on now. He's 5'4 or something like that. And he played for the NBA and was dunking in games. He was in slam dunk competitions. He won a slam dunk contest. Spud Webb. So don't tell me that, you know, these, yeah, everything's, everything's um, um, unfair at the moment. But so what? We're talking about health and safety right now. We're talking about protecting people. Go ahead and keep on pushing it. You want a woman that turned into a man to compete against other men in actual physical combat. You want to keep on dealing with like Leah Thomas, who um, is a trans woman who transitioned to a woman who killed everybody in swimming in every single competition in the Olympics. Was that in the Olympics? It wasn't in the Olympics. It was for a big competition, though. And she whooped every he she whooped everybody's tails. Everybody got shoulders big, way bigger than mine, way bigger than mine. Standing next that. The skill level ain't even got to be that of a man. This, look at the strides. Come on now. This, this is crazy. Be a jockey. I couldn't be a basketball player. You might make the cut. In you basketball. could be You're a what, basketball player, one, bro. Something like that. So you might just about make it. Dude, full of excuses. He could have been a basketball player. Come on, bro. But you'd still be a small guy on the NBA circuit. We just have to come Excuses. to terms with the fact so you that think it's so, okay. sport is so let me ask unequal. You. So what about this, then? What about this? Mm, I'm taking mm, a of, of that point. You take this to uh, the worst extreme, right? Which is? Which is that we know lots of cheating happens in sport for commercial Martina games. Martina has withdrawn that no, no, remark I'm not talking about, about cheating. I'm not talking about that. I think it's wrong to call the transgender athletes cheating. There is no deliberate but it is intent not, to procure Let me finish my question. Advantage. Let me finish my question. The point I was going to make is this. It is not beyond the realms of fantasy mm -hmm. that a low-ranking male tennis okay, player... Okay. Well, well, let me finish. I, I know right. what you're going to yeah, say. Well, let me finish what I'm going to say. Wait, let let him say let the let him top 1,500 it. male players in the world mm -hmm. would beat Serena Williams, the greatest tennis player of all time, right? So, okay. so what happens if one of them decides for purely, mm. purely financial mm. gain. To put his hand up, yep. say, I identify as a woman, yep. I'll have a testosterone treat. He doesn't even I'll, need to do that. Right, I'll compete against the women, I'll win tens of millions okay. of prize money, I'll be a champion at everything, and I will effectively destroy women's tennis, right, by doing this, and then go back to being a man in three years' time when my career's over. Okay. What's to stop them doing okay. that? No, if you do that, 
I think if anybody, if anybody do that, if you go from one, uh, man to woman and you say, look, everybody, hey, check this out. I'm going to be a woman. I want to compete against the women and I'm going to take testosterone and all that other stuff. I think the other rule should be two years later, within two years, you should get your dingling cut off. Okay. So if you ever decide to go back as a man, then you get your dingling back. Okay. They can, they can sew it back on or whatever. If it's, if they, you know, you, it's, it's up to you. It should be your responsibility to keep it in the freezer, take care of it and make sure that you can reattach it when it's time to reattach it. It's your responsibility. If you let it go bad, you let you go, you let your dingling go bad in your freezer, then that's all on you. All right. It shouldn't be the government's fault to protect your dingling. Okay. But at the end of the day, this is not going to be fair. I don't care how many ways this guy try to put it. Um, this professor or wh whoever he is, he's not really putting together a, um, a good argument. Okay. Well, nothing theoretically. How can that be fair? Well, let's just let me run the scenario past run you. Run the scenario, again. bro. So a 15 year run old, it. we'll call him Colin, uh, decides he wants success, he wants the fame, he wants the money, he wants a celebrity status, this adulation that comes with sporting excellence. And for the next 20 years, that's the duration of an mm -hmm. average sporting career, Colin becomes Colleen mm -hmm. and self-identifies as a woman. A richly garlanded career comes to a mm -hmm. close when she... Uh, reaches the age of, let's say, 35, right. calls a press conference, says, I want to thank God, I want to thank all the people that supported me, especially my fans, oh, and I'm retiring. By the way, I want to be known as Colin. I'm right. going back to being a man. Do you think that's a realistic no, scenario? No, but what I do think is realistic is my scenario, it's... which is actually we see so much cheating at high-level sport But now. why would Cycling someone live a facade? You don't think that's a big Indeed. deal? I think everyone's living a facade. Who is this guy, bruh? Clearly, this guy has not been outside. He knows no one but the people who live in his home. It has to be that way. I honestly believe that. It, it can't be any other way. Like, who lives a facade? Who's fake out here running around? I mean, everybody I've met are pretty real, are pretty trustworthy. He would be walking, he the type of person to be walking up the going street and get bust in the back of his head because he think that he can walk through the hood at 11 o'clock at night simply because um, it's good people everywhere. No, bruh. You, I bet you, I bet you, I bet he the type of person that, um, he, he locks everything in front. Like, he, he the type of person that as soon as he, he get out of his car to go into Target, uh, he walk five steps away from it, turn around and be like, beep, beep. And then uh, he walked five more steps and turned around and do it again just to make sure. Is it... Come on, bro. You know people. He's, he's probably just a scary individual who believes that everybody are who they are and he trusts who they trust. And right now, the people that he's trusting are the LGBTQs. I think it's quite likely that somebody might lead the side I think three if years you look to make at money. the 1970s, where you have states such as the East Germans, where women were fed uh, testosterone. Yes. They were forced, effectively forced into sex change. So, this yeah. is a possibility. It could well, happen. And at the end of the day, the record books speak for themselves. And even well, if you, you do, look at male record well, times compared Ellis, to female Ellis, record even times, if there my is scenario, clearly, yeah, Ellis, quite clearly, a discrepancy. Ellis, my point was the worst-case scenario. But That is a fly sweater she got on right there with the two cats right there. That's a fly sweater, little two cats looking at each other. That's a fly sweater. I like that right there. That's that's pretty daggone dope. Yeah, that's fly. And how come they ain't let the the woman with the with the, with the voice that I really like? She ain't talk again. She ain't talk one more time. She did the intro and was out. She was like, "See, I knew y'all pervs was gonna love my voice too much. Y'all can't hear my voice no more." There you go. That's what you get. But take the average case scenario going on right now. I was in America the last few weeks, right? In Connecticut, the, the athletics championships, right, at oh. sort of 17, 18-year-old level, are being completely dominated by transgender women who actually are six foot two, three mm. inch, very powerful former male biological bodies. How can that be fair? Here's what happened there. The girl who came, the girl who came eighth, 
yeah. lost out on qualifying for the state finals and a potential $200,000 scholarship because the two winners were transgender women who were just built so powerfully and were so fast, she didn't have a chance. And that I'm cannot not, be fair. I'm not suggesting that there is an easy solution What is this. the solution, then? I think he we has have to won. embrace inclusivity. What does that mean? For the, well, that, what that Sport means is... is about that he just accept it without any thought, is what he said. Embrace inclusivity. Accept it without any thought. If something happens, we'll handle it then. If there, if the men that are now women are whooping all the women's tails, we'll handle it then, huh? If the woman who turned to a man and then started competing against all the men, go into the daggone ring and die, we'll handle it then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the person at the end of the day, what the spirit of sport. You can say all these things. Let, 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 what is it actually meant? Let me answer the question then. Be silent. You can't. Inclusivity answer the question. means that we assign the person to whatever event their present day sex suggests they should compete in. Okay, Sharon, are you. I don't persuaded? understand what that even are means. You Sharon, well, <laughs> <I'll, I'll, laughs> she's looking at him like, what Sharon, the hell is that? No, you've heard what? the debate if, here. If you are a man now, you compete as a man. That's but, but, but hold, but the whole point is that transgender okay. women okay. identify as women and are recognised as such. And that's, no one's disputing their right to identify as a woman. Shall what I'm disputing is their right to identify as a woman and then unfairly mm. compete against women born to female biological bodies. That is the debate. Yeah, it's not it, about being anti-transgender. And Sharon, are you persuaded by Professor Cashmore's theory? No, absolutely not. I mean, I think that's the argument, really, no isn't one it? Is. I think it's the word gender and then there's the word sex. And I think mm. sex means the, the biological sex that you were born into and that is going to affect you for the rest of your life because that is your DNA, your XY chromosomes or your double X chromosome. And you're not going to lose that whatever, you know, you're, you're given or whatever you suppress. So, Sharon, how and then do you there's stand your gender on the of choice. And I think it's case. really important that we support the... Sharon, how do you stand on um, I stand on, on the... Uh, we've already had this discussion. Not today we, we haven't. We've already had that discussion once before, actually, on the radio ten know, days ago. So, and you know that I, that I stand on the fact that she should be able to compete if well, she reduces her yeah. She was born a woman. So, but yeah, that but is an individual case. That's size. not what we're talking about today. Now, I just don't realise what the doctor said. He said they should be able to compete in the sex that they are today. That's what they should do. They should be able to compete in the sex that they are today. That makes absolutely no sense. If they're a man today and they become a woman, they should still compete against men. So you mean to tell me if today LeBron James say I am a woman, but I'm still gonna compete over here. So you mean next time, next few years, we gotta see LeBron James running around at six foot nine, um, 260 pounds uh, with breasts and, and, and a vagina. That's what we gonna be doing. No, no, that ain't happening. He gonna go to post somebody up and they gonna be all rubbing on his butt and his in his breast trying to dag on freak him on the floor like come on man that's that's a tech right there Brr, come on they're gonna be blowing the whistle all the time you know how many dag on players are gonna want to cop a cop a feel of of lebron's new breast huh huh they gonna want to cop a feel of lebron's new breast huh y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comments below and if you have yet to hit that subscribe button please make sure you do so on your way out the door once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully inside of the Patreon as well. You all have been amazing. I love y'all.